Right, so let's get with this question. Determine the volume of the solid generated when the area between the curve y is equal to 2x minus x squared and the x-axis rotates about first the x-axis, second the y-axis. Now, the main thing is the graph. Let's sketch this graph. Right, so what do we have here? y is equal to 2x minus x squared. So this is a parabola. How do you know it's of the form ax squared plus bx plus c? Clearly, there's a dx squared plus bx, c is 0. So, we know that if your a is greater than 0, that means positive, if your parabola will be concave up or happy face, if your a is less than 0, it will be concave down or sad face. Right, so in our case, there's your A value here, your A is negative 1. So if it's negative, that means it's going to be by 2 down, less than 0. Right, so we should have an idea of how the graph is going to look just by looking at the standard equation. Okay, you should have an idea of what shape of the graph it will be. Right, so now, what do we need to find here? We need to find the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the turning point. So let's find that. So for my x-intercepts, I will let y equal to 0. So that means 2x minus x squared equal to 0. Now, clearly x and x is common. I can factorize, take out x as a common factor, so I'm left with 2 minus x. Check, x times 2 is 2x. x times minus x is minus x squared. So now, x is equal to 0 or 2 minus x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 2, or 2 is equal to x, same thing. All right, so those are the x-intercepts. What about the y-intercepts? Right, you can see by observation that your y-intercept is 0, but just for the calculation part here, which you don't really have to show this part here. But for the y-intercepts, you're going to let x equal to 0. So that means whenever I see x in the original equation, I will replace it with 0. So that's going to be 2 times 0 minus 0 squared, which is 0. Okay, what else do we need to find? Turning points. So to find the turning point, you find dy over dx, and you make it equal to 0. Or you can go minus b over 2a, but let's use calculus. Since the whole section is on calculus, let's just you find, uh, use calculus to find it. So what do we know? That y is equal to 2x minus x squared. So dy over dx, the derivative of 2x is 2 derivative of minus x squared is minus 2x. So that is the first derivative. You make it equal to 0. Solve for x. So therefore 2 is equal to 2x. So 2 over 2 is equal to x. So therefore x is equal to y. So, alright. To find the y value of the turning point, substitute the x value into the original equation. So therefore, y is equal to 2 times 1 minus 1 squared. We replace there. And then we got 2 minus 1, which is also 1. Right. Now, if you are using the other technique, or x is equal to minus b over 2a to find the x value of the turning point. So remember you have y is equal to minus x squared plus 2x. That is the original equation. So if I want to use this formula, then clearly my a is minus 1, my b is 2 there. 
So therefore it's going to be minus B over 2A. We do our substitution. So that's going to be minus 2 over 2 times 1, which is minus 2 over 2, which is equal to minus 1. Okay, sorry, but did I make a mistake? Minus B over 2 times, sorry, my mistake, what A is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1. Alright, whichever way we do it, <coughs> we should come to the same x value of the turning point. Alright, so to find the y value, substitute the x value into the original equation. Alright, so now, we got that sorted out. That's a graph. That's just the calculation. Let's sketch this graph. So we got our y axis, x axis. All right. So our turning point. So we found our turning point. So therefore, our turning point was one. Alright, so when x was 1, y was also 1. We know that this graph, the shape of the graph, which one are we sketching? A less than 0. You can see your A is negative, so you know this is the graph that you are sketching. And so your turning point, 1, 1. Let's space it out nicely. Let's call this one here, that one there. So there's my 1, 1. Okay, so there's the turning point, which is 1 there. One there. X intercepts, Y intercepts, X is equal to 0, X is equal to 2. So if this is the 1, 2 should be around here. Your Y intercept is also 0, we found this. So here, there is your parabola. Label everything as coordinates. We know that this is 2, but on the x axis, what is y equal to? 0. Okay, so here, 0, 0. This is to avoid any confusion when we, are, when we come to the part of substituting our limits for integration. We must be clear on what, which is the x value, which is the y value. This is just volume. Okay, for every single application after the z. Now, what do we do? We sketch the graph. The question stated the area between the curve and the x-axis. Can you see the area? This is the area between the curve and the x-axis. So this is the area here. This is the area describing. This area begins at an x value of 0 and ends at an x value of Two. You have a choice now. Okay. Now, which representative rectangle are you going to use? Now, the best option for this will be, the easier option will be used, will be to use the vertical length. Okay, so you use a representative rectangle with a vertical length, that means the longest side is the change in y. So there's my rectangle.
And we can see that this representative rectangle is perpendicular. Is it? It's perpendicular. If you extend it right into vertical length, it is perpendicular to. So this is. Let's just write it down. Perpendicular to the x axis. As it stands, it is perpendicular to the x axis and it is also parallel to the y axis. So it's perpendicular to the x axis, parallel. Here's the y axis. Okay, there's the y axis. You can see here's the y axis is actually parallel to the y axis. Right, so we know that. Now let's answer the question. First question is, this area rotates about the x-axis. So what do we know? It's perpendicular to the x-axis. Right, so let's answer this question here. So the first one is the x-axis. We know that it is perpendicular to the x-axis. So therefore, we are using the disk method. So perpendicular, so we know that delta x is perpendicular to the x-axis, so therefore we are using the disk method. Right, so what is the disk method? What is the formula for the disk method? So we know that volume is equal to area of base multiplied by the perpendicular height. That is the formula. So I told you, you need to learn it in this way. It's pi r squared h. Right, so the formula for volume, this method is pi r squared h. Where did I get pi r squared from? It is the area of the base. The base is a circle. The area of the circle is pi r squared and the height, well, h is for height. Right, that's the other x in this case. So this now, I'm writing down delta Vx. So let me just leave it as V for now. V for volume. That is just explaining the formula. Now, let's write down a compulsory step. Delta Vx. Now, this you have to write down. Right, so this is going to be pi times r squared h. Let's go back to the diagram. What is R and what is H? So what's going to be happening here is this area is going to be rotating about the x-axis. So how will it look? So here is your parabola there. So when it rotates about the x-axis, it's going to be rotating and then your volume will be obtained. Okay. So we're going around and around. So there's a chair going around the x-axis. So, if you are rotating, if you are going around the x-axis, you need your radius now. The radius is measured from the center all the way up to the circumference or down. Okay, so there's the check. If you're going around the x-axis, so this is the center to there, so your radius is measured in terms of y. So remember that. If you're going around the x-axis, your radius is measured in terms of y. If you're going around the y-axis, your radius will be measured in terms of x. Right, so you remember that. If it's x-axis, your radius cannot be x, it will be y. If it's y-axis, your radius cannot be y, it will be x. Right, so take note of that. So your radius is y and delta x is going to be h for height. Right. So it must be clear with this. <laughs> so it's going to be pi y squared times delta x. Now, there's only one graph here. If the area is bounded by the curve and the x axis, there's only one graph, so we do not have to go top graph minus bottom graph. Okay, we don't have to. Now, unless there was another point of intersection here, we have to work out the difference. There is no difference, the bottom is zero. Okay. Now, this you must write down. This is the formula for the volume of J. 
just the small rectangle rotating about the x-axis, we want the total volume. So total volume. So when you write down total volume, you do not write down the answer. Now it's just going to be Vx. And you got your pi. There's your delta x. As soon as you put your integration sign in, delta x now becomes dx. Now we are integrating with respect to x. We are using x values b and a, and this is y squared. Right. Now, if we are integrating with respect to x, that means we are interested in the x value in, at the beginning. So there's the beginning here. Extreme left. The, the area starts here, ends there. So the x value at the beginning is 0. The x value at the end is 2. So your x intercepts must be 100%. Otherwise, you we'll substitute the wrong value. So we're going 2, 0. And that is y squared. What is y? So, remember y, the distance from there to there, that is actually the radius now. So what is y? We didn't label our graph. So let's label the graph properly. y is equal to uh, minus x squared plus 2x. Always label your graph. I forgot to label my graph. Always label your graph so you know what is y. y is equal to x squared plus Minus x squared plus 2. So minus x squared plus 2x. Or 2x minus x squared. Same thing. Let's substitute. So I'm going minus x squared plus 2x. Now, we need to integrate. So we go back to our previous level 1, which is our n5 work. This is not really an n5 integration problem. This is like an n4 integration problem. This is not in standard form. You do not have to complete the square here. You just have to square this because it needs to be simplified. Nice. There's no exact derivative here, so you square it in one step. So what do I mean? If I have um, a plus b all squared, that's exactly what I have. A is minus x squared, b is 2x. And you know the formula is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing there. So I'm going a squared. Let me show you how to use this formula. So that's a squared. Right in one step, there's a step. a squared. Next step is plus 2ab. So I'm going to go plus. 2 times a times b, there's my plus 2ab, and the last term is plus b squared, so that's going to be plus b squared, don't forget your dx, we are integrating with respect to x, alright, so now we need to use our exponent laws here, so now you've got negative x squared squared. The negative is inside the brackets, so therefore it means negative squared means negative times negative. So when you square negative, it is a positive, and that will be 2 times 2, which is 4. Remember, when you, when you have a power raised to a higher power, you multiply the exponents, it's not 2 squared. Even though 2 squared is 4, but the rule is not 2 squared, 2 times 2. Right, so here a positive times a negative times a positive will be negative, 2 times 2 will be 4, x squared times x, when you are multiplying and the bases are the same, write down the base once, add the exponents, 2 and 1 will give you 3, you are clear with that? Last term, 2 times x, be careful, common mistake that students make, forgetting about the 2, only focusing on x, 2 is being multiplied by x, so every single factor must take on the power. So it's 2 squared, x squared. So that's going to be 4x squared. 
Right, so make sure all this is 100%. Right, this is should this should not be a problem. The main thing is yeah, do you understand how to sketch this graph? Do you understand the choice that you have? Whether to use delta x or delta y. Let's integrate. Now this one is a simple integration. So that's gonna be x to the power 5 over 5. Integrate 4x cubed, that's going to be minus 4x to the power 4 over 4. Integrate 4x squared, that will be 4x to the power 3 over 3. Substituting 2 and 0. Let's see what we get. Look at that one calculation, I'm going to be fast here. Alright, so let's substitute. So we got 1 over 5 x squared minus x to the power 4 plus 4 over 3 x to the power 3. We are substituting 2. Thickness. 
This is how I want you to learn it. Do not rely on the formula sheets. Okay, for all these applications. Here. You remember volume is equal to circumference times height times thickness. That is the formula for the shell method. So then you go to your diagram. Okay, we are rotating about the y-axis. So you just do a small rotation. How is this going to look? It's going to look something like this. Here. When you rotate it. You rotate this. It's going around there. So there is your rotation about the y-axis. Now, why must you do this here? You need to check what is the radius measured in terms of, okay? So you are rotating about the y-axis, that means you're going left and right, you're going around. So your radius, there's your radius. Your radius is the distance from the center to any point of the circumference. So your radius now is measured in terms of x. Okay, over that. You're going around the y-axis, your radius is measured in terms of x. Why do we need to know that? Because circumference is equal to 2 pi r. <clears throat> circumference is equal to 2 pi r. What is r? Your r is measured in terms of x, so this is going to be 2 pi x. Okay. The height, the thickness, so your thickness here, your thickness is the breadth of the representative rectangle, which is delta x. So there is your thickness. So when you, you when you are using the shell method, your thickness is always the breadth of the representative rectangle. If it's delta x, your thickness is delta x. If it's delta y, your thickness will be delta y when you are using the shell method. So what is the height? The height is basically the length of the rectangle, the longest side. So the height is from the bottom here to the top. It is measuring, you're basically measuring a y length. Can you see that? So your height is going up, so your height is y. Your height is measured in terms of y. So once you've got that sorted out, then you cannot go wrong. Let's write down the formula. Okay, so delta v y. So this y here means y axis, axis of rotation or reference axis. Circumference. What is circumference? 2 pi r, we know it's 2 pi x times the height. We know your height is y and then your thickness is delta x. So it's circumference times height times thickness. Now, total volume. Once you write down total volume, that's going to be Vy. Now I'm going to put in my integration symbol. And then as soon as you put in your integration sign, delta x now becomes dx. You will write it as dx. Now it means we are integrating with respect to x. This is delta x. That means we are still using the x values for substitution here, v and a. 2 pi is a constant, so your 2 pi you write it in front, and this is x times y. And that is the formula for the shell method 1 gram. The shell method 1 gram, that is the formula. Okay, now we do the substitution. So that's going to be. 2 pi. Now, what are the values? We just we use the same values that we used last time. We have for the this method. Okay, the fact is, if this is dx here, we are interested in the x value at the beginning and the x value at the end, even though you are rotating around the y axis. Okay, 
So what is the x value at the beginning? Zero. X value at the end? Two. So then we got x times y. So now we need to get y in terms of x. X, this x is fine, so that is not x. But what is y? So go to your diagram and check. What is y? This is the y value. From here to here, this is y. Y is basically the equation of the parabola. So y is, in terms of x, is 2x minus x squared. Now, we just can simplify. This is an easy part, the last part. You see, the main thing is getting to this part here. The understanding of the graph and everything, the formula. And then get this is the easy part. Now simplify this so we can multiply there x times 2x, which will be 2x squared, x times minus x squared, which will be minus x to the power 3 dx. So now we are integrating with respect to x. That's the easy part to do. This will be 2x to the power 3 over 3 minus x to the power 4 over 4. Substituting my 2 and 0, let's see what we get. And then the calculator. Right, so let's see what we get when we substitute 2, so that's 2 over 3, x to the power 3. Minus 1 over 4, x to the power 4, so when I substitute 2, I'm getting 4 over 3, minus substitute 0, you can see you're going to get a 0, so now, So 2 pi times 4 over 3, which will be 8 over 3 pi units cubed. Is that correct? Did you get that? So this is 8 over 3 pi units cubed. That's going to be 8 over 3 pi. Let's see, what is that equal to? So this is equal to 8,378 units to the power 3. So I got that answer in. Right, so this was one graph, parabola, shell method, nothing difficult here about this. The main thing is you must understand which formula to use, when to use it. It all depends on whether your representative rectangle is perpendicular to the reference axis. If it is perpendicular, you are using the disk method. If it's parallel to the reference axis, you're using the shell method. Do not rely on the formula sheet. You learn it the way I'm showing it to you. All right, let's deal with the next one. Let me give you a chance to sketch these two graphs. Right, so moving on to the next question. Yeah? Determine the volume of the solid generated when the area enclosed, so there's the key word here, this area is enclosed, another word is bounded. So the area enclosed by the curves, y is equal to 2x squared, so there's the first curve, x is equal to 2y squared, that's my second graph, and this rotates about the x-axis. Right, now, when we have y is equal to ax squared, this is a parabola similar to that one. Right, now, what determines the shape is if a is greater than 0, then it's pointing up. If A is less than 0, it's going to be pointing down. Or concave up, happy face, concave down, set this. So that this represents this curve here. Right. 
Now, when you have x is equal to a y squared, then your parabola is either pointing to the right or to the left. Just by looking at the equation, you must be able to determine the shape. So, if this is the case, then the coefficient here is positive. If your graph is pointing to the left, that means the coefficient is negative. Right. So now, let's sketch this graph. Right, so let's deal with this one first. Y is equal to AX squared. So this is 2. 2 is a positive number. So therefore, the graph, if it's positive, it's facing up. We are clear with that, that you know from school. So there's my parabola, Y is equal to 2X squared. Now, the next parabola is x is equal to 2y squared. So now this parabola, where x is the subject of the formula, a y squared, check. Again, this is a positive number. So your graph is, there's a check. a greater than 0, positive, so facing to the right. Now, can you see the enclosed area here. This is the enclosed area. Okay, now, so we have points of intersection now. Now, just by observation, without looking anything up, we know that these parabolas turn at the origin, so therefore we already have one point of intersection there, which is 0, 0. Okay, we need to find this point of intersection. Right, because it all depends now on the choice that we make. Which values are we going to be using? Are we using the x values or are we using the y values? Right, so let's find those points of intersection. Exponent velocity. So this is going to be 2 squared, which is 
4 y squared, all squared, which will be y 2 times 2 is 4. So clear with that? So now y is equal to 2 times 4, which is 8y to the power 4. Alright, now let's make this equation equal to 0 and solve for y. So y minus 8y to the power 4 is equal to 0. I can factorize and solve. So if I take out y as a common factor, what am I left with? I'm left with 1 minus 8y to the power 3. Alright, now I've got two factors. I equate both of them to 0. So y is equal to 0. So you can see y is equal to 0. Or 1 minus 8y cube is equal to 0. And now I can just solve for y here. So y is equal to 0. You know that is true. y is equal to 0. There's one point. So we're working out the y value first, x value second. Let's see this one here. So 1 is equal to 8y cubed. So 1 over 8 is equal to y cubed. So that means if I've got y cubed equal to 1 over 8, I'm going to find the cube root of both sides. So the cube root of 1 over 8 is equal to the cube root of y cubed. So therefore, y is equal to 1 over 2. Alright, so we got y is equal to 1 over 2. Now you will take y, substitute into the equation x is equal to 2y squared. So we know that x is equal to 2y squared. x is equal to 2 times y squared. But what is y? y is 1 over 2. So now it's going to be 2 times. 1 over 2 all squared, square the numerator, that's 1, square the denominator, that's 4. 2 times 1 over 4 is 2 over 4, which is the same as 1 over 2. So, simultaneous equations. Right, so, we got that sorted out. Um, also, when y is equal to 0, if I substitute 0 then, 0 squared is 0, 0 times 2. Is, that's the other one, which we don't even have to write down here. But there's a chance. So we worked out x is equal to 1 over 2, y is also equal to 1 over 2. Alright, so now let's see what we're going to do now. So what does this question state? Which axis are we going to rotate about? We want to rotate about the x-axis. So now, if we have a choice. It's either we want to use a vertical representative rectangle or a horizontal. Now, let, since I've done the shell method here, let me go with the shell method again. Okay, let's do the shell method again. So if I want to use the shell method, then my representative rectangle must be parallel to the reference axis. So here's my reference axis, which is the x-axis. If I want to use the shell method, I'll make it parallel. So there's the parallel. Can you see that? So I'm going delta y is parallel. You can see that parallel to the. I'm choosing a little bit more difficult option here, but it's better to know it. Certain examples, you will find that the shell method is much easier to use than the disk method. Okay. Now, I made a choice and delta y is parallel to the x-axis. If it is parallel, I'm going to be using the shell method. So now, what is the formula for the shell method? 
So we know the formula volume is equal to circumference times height times thickness. So let's write that down. The volume is equal to the circumference times the height times the thickness. So now we're going delta V X. Now circumference. Which axis are we rotating about? So we going around the x axis. You go take your pencil just to make sure you do a rotation. And you know if you're going around the x axis, that means you your radius now. Your radius is measured in terms of going around the x axis, your radius is measured in terms of y. Okay, so your circumference is going to be 2 pi r, which is y. Alright, circumference is 2 pi r. Then your height. Now what is the height? Remember the height is the length, the longer side. So you check what's touching this side and what's touching, basically what's touching one, the right end, what's touching the left end. It's two completely different terms. Can you say that? So the height is the longer side here. Yeah? <clears throat> so it's the difference between the two x values. So let's call this one x2. Let's call that x1. If I want this length, I will subtract x1 minus x2. So my height is going to be x1 minus x2. And then your thickness, I always told you, it's either delta x or delta y. In this case, we got delta y. So my thickness will be delta y. And that is the formula for the shell method dealing with two curves. So when it's two curves, remember the height is the difference between the two. Okay, now total volume. So I've got my 2 pi. I'm going to integrate that is dc, that is y, and that's going to be x1 minus x2 dy. Remember, once I put in my integration sign, delta y becomes dy. Now, what are the y values? If I'm integrating with respect to y, the y value, what's the y value at? Now, when you were asking me that question, you check the highest point of the area, where the area ends, the highest point here is y equal to half, and the lowest point here is one equal to zero. So that's exactly how you identify it. So that's half, zero. We are integrating with respect to y. So that means we need to get x1 in terms of y, x2 in terms of y. This y value, this y variable there, that is fine. So that is my y. What is x1 now? Where is x1? So x1 is touching this parabola here. Can you see that? So what is the equation of this parabola? This parabola here is y is equal to 2x squared. So we know that y is equal to 2 2x squared. That means y over 2 is equal to x squared. I need to make x the subject of the formula here. So if x squared is equal to y over 2, I will find the square root of both sides. So that means the square root of y over 2 is equal to x. Now, this has to be simplified further. So this will be square root y divided by square root 2 is equal to x. Very important to simplify it when you come to the integration part. You do not leave it like the square root of y over 2. So what happens is that this is basically 1 over root 2 multiplied by y to the power half. There's a chair. 1 over root 2 multiplied by y to the power half minus x2. What is x2? There's x2 here. x2 is this parabola. Check what's touching here on this end. What is the equation of this parabola? x is equal to 2y squared. We do not have to manipulate this here. Alright, so this is the part where most people will make a mistake with not simplifying. Okay, when you do it, you will realize it. 
So there's my 1 over 2, there's my 0. Now this is the N5 integration part. In fact, it's a simple integration. I'm going to remove the brackets. So y times y there, I've got 1 over root 2. y, 1 plus half will be 3 over 2. y times minus 2y squared is minus 2y to the power 3. And I'm almost done now. I'm going to integrate and substitute. So that's 1 over root 2. Integrate y to the power 3. Sorry, not y to the power 3. Integrating y to the power 3 over 2. 3 over 2 plus 1 will be 5 over 2. 5 over 2. Integrating by 2y cubed. 3 plus 1 will be 4 over 4. We are now going to be substituting 1 over 2 and 0. So there's many places that you need to be careful. You can see simultaneous equations, simplification of the formula. That's why this requires a lot of practice in your calculation. So I'm going to substitute to substitute. Let's see what we get there. You can do it one time. So I've got my 1 over root 2. Many more to come. 